My name is Chris Villain, and I am so excited to be here with you today to dive into the music of Street Fighter VI. So without further ado, let's uh, bring everybody on stage, shall we? Please join me in welcoming Director of Strategic Gaming Partnerships and Soundtracks at Sony Music, Colin Yost. <laughs> Executive Music Producer, Koyo Sone. We also got record producer, GRP. And last, but certainly not least, recording artist, J-Star. All right, all right. So we're going to just dive right into some questions because we got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Um, our first question is direct to Koyo. Um, what were the primary inspirations and themes you wanted to convey through the music in Street Fighter VI? So, um, the biggest inspiration for the music for Street Fighter VI is probably the story and, you know, the settings and a lot of the information that we didn't know until Street Fighter VI. So, in Street Fighter VI, there's a game mode called a World Tour, which we have a chance to create your character and uh, tour the world and uh, train yourself with the masters, um, you know, Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li, and all the characters that we love. And the cool thing about it is we get a chance to learn about so much of the stories that we didn't know for many years. So, for example, my favorite one is probably Ryu. I love Ryu. I've been playing Ryu for a long time. But uh, in that story mode, um, the World War mode, there's a scene that Ryu actually tells um, you know, people that he has a high status credit card. And to me, it's like, wow, I thought you were kind of broke and, you know, he never had a nice outfit, but, you know, he always kind of looks like he's always fighting, but I didn't think he, you know, he was doing well. But um, it turned out he actually explains he wins tournaments and he receives some money and he helps people, but he doesn't know how to manage money. So Ken actually manages money for him and he gives credit card to Ryu. And that's to me, it's just like, okay, that's really interesting. So there are many information like that um, that we get a chance to learn in the World Tour mode. And that has been really great inspiration for us because it just gives us opportunity to think, okay, you is not just a serious guy, but if you look at the new Outfit 3 that just came out, he's dressing super cool, he's having fun in his life, so it's a good example that we reflected, you know, sort of the coolness of view. And we did the same thing for the other characters. So um, a lot of music that we have, um, you know, if you listen to the music itself, I think that music has a good dimensions and depth to explain who the characters are and what the stories they are. Gotcha, gotcha. And we also have to ask, how do you even make music for a fighting video game? Like, do the sound effects we hear affect the score that, and how that's going to sound like? Yeah, so um, there are many different approaches for creating music for video games. But in particular, the fighting game is, is kind of tricky because yeah. we have a lot of sound effects. And as you know, there's a lot going on. Every time you move, you just call the move name, right? You just so there are a lot of things going on and you know we're a huge fan of also a king of fighter you know mortal kombat and the fighting games we love fighting games a lot but um in particular um for street fighter 6 the our idea was to create sort of the emotional journey for the three round experience Ooh. so um creatively you know we reflect a lot of you know, the character stories and stuff like we, you know, talked about. But uh, for the sort of the music structure, we created the structure that's going to help the journey for the three rounds. Which means, for example, like an intro, we have sort of like, you know, get ready, sort of the vibe. And round one, you know, we definitely have, let's just, you know, let's get started, you know, let's just do this. Yeah. Then it builds up the tension to round two, but on round two, whether you lose or lost, you know, whether you lose a win on the first round, 
you want to kind of change your mindset and yeah, you want to get ready. Exactly, yeah. right? So we tried to do that on the round two and the final round, of course, it's going to be super exciting. But we also have a music called a pinch and also we have a music called a uh, break. And mm. what it is, is, you know, in the game, when the life goes down below certain level, then of course the music changes to pinch. Ooh. Yeah, so that kind of interactively changes that. But the idea was to kind of, you know, let the player focus on the last moment of the rounds, you know, getting excited about it, but really kind of help the journey of the fighting experience. Mm. Then after the round, we have this break music, but we just intentionally really just made it very calm so that it's a bit of a zen moment, so to speak. For the people that just got their butt kicked. Exactly. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Sure, so sure. that's the kind of the ideas for the music structure and, you know, that's the design of the music. That's, see, these are all things we don't naturally think about. I don't think about, like, when you were saying how when the health goes down, like, like that's crazy that you, that you guys help have that all programmed in. I love it. I love it. We're going to jump over to our good friend, GRP. GRP, how you doing? Hi. <laughs> yeah. Good. How are you? <laughs> so you produced the main theme, which is called Not on the Sidelines, with Roko808, who I believe is, is Roko. I feel Roko is here. Shout out to Roko808. Yeah, Roko. Let's go. <laughs> um, and also Randy Marks and Yoshia Teriyama. Tell us what the process was like for making that song. Okay, so uh, Capcom's composer Teriyama-san, he sent me the first uh, version of the song and along with the Street Fighter Six information. Songs was really great already and I got more inspiration uh, from the Street Fighter Six information and then uh, I just started arranging, the added the kick snare, synthesizer, I'm making a synth melody, the change, the uh, chord progression. And after we did it, uh, we sent to back the Terayama-san. But he said, I love it. We love that, we yeah. love it too. <laughs> and then it's time to record with uh, Randy Marks and Rocco 808, and we invited them to my studio. And that way how I usually work, I, I, I invite my uh, artists to my studio and exchanging idea for melodies and cadence. And sometimes I record myself my idea that they give me the idea sometimes and I give, you, give them my idea too. And back and forth and making the music. So we did that exactly same thing for this song too. Dang, yeah. I love it, I love it. So before I ask any more questions, this is really cool. The Street Fighter team has a new song that they'd like to play for us. So let's check it out. Shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all already know. You know what time it is. I belong in the top spot number oh, one. Oh. Hope you're ready for the fight. Bring supreme. That was sick. Um, GRV, so yes. how is working on this song, because you will produce the vocals and the track, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, for this song in particular, what was your experience like? Uh, the inspiration of this song was the players to be the number one on the Capcom World Tournament, Pro, Pro Tournament. And then uh, I produced a vocal and uh, engineered for this song. And then Roko and Randy, 
uh, they came to my studio and the way uh, we uh, record this song and exchange the idea, you know, idea for the melodies, the recording something. Sure. And after we did, uh, we sent song to Jay. And then a few weeks, few weeks later, she came to my studio and she was so ready to go. Dang. She's so fast and then she just took a few takes and it, that was it. Wow. Yep. Okay, so that is a that is a perfect segue into my next question. Yeah. To J Star, J Star, how you doing? Let's go. Obviously, I don't know if you guys um, knew this. Uh, Jay, we heard a familiar voice on that track. Uh, tell us uh, how is it how is it like recording that song, and then how did you get involved with Street Fighter Six? Um, recording a song for Street Fighter Six was definitely one of my childhood dreams coming true. I'm like bucket list. Right. <laughs> it, it was not on my 2023 bingo card at all, <laughs> but I receive it. I definitely receive it. Um, pretty much, I'd say it's the universe doing its thing. You know, right timing. Uh, Thank Koyo you, universe. We love you. Exactly. Thank you, always. Uh, Koyo can attest to this, but they had been looking for a female vocalist for a really long time. Uh, and when he reached out to me, asking me to be a part of this top secret song without even knowing what it was for, I was all in. I was Absolutely like, this is yes. mysterious. This sounds fun. Count me in. Like, I don't even care. It, it could be for Barney. I don't care. Like, I'm all <laughs> in. But um, he started to unveil, like, what it was for. And once things became official, I learned that it was for Street Fighter Six, And I was even more excited. I did a cartwheel, and I'm not even good at cartwheels. Good. So I tried. I did one. <laughs> um, and I sent, they sent over the track, like GRP said. And I sent him back a demo of, like, what I had come up with as far as the verse. And the next thing I knew, I was in the studio with GRP, Koyo, what? Rocco, and Randy. And we were making a song that you guys just heard. Dang, that's crazy. Congratulations yeah. to everybody Thank you. here. Yeah. Um, all right, so um, we're going to go person by person for this question. Uh, I want to hear, I'm going to ask the question, and then I'm just going to stall for a second, because it may be hard for you guys to answer. It might be like picking your favorite child. Do each of you have a personal favorite track from Street Fighter VI? I have to go with the obvious choice, the new song. I was going to say, that, <laughs> let's, let's go with that one. <laughs> what about you, Koyo? Well, I love Kimberly. Uh, Kimberly is my favorite character, nice. honestly. The music is great. It's got a bit of a sort of a motif from Guy's theme and also 8-bit stuff because it's coming from sort of a final fight homage. So yeah, I love yeah. the idea of it. So I love that I Kimberly love song. It. Now, I feel like moving to this side of the table, the answer may become obvious, but let's ask GRP, what is your favorite track? I love Dew. Oh. Okay. Because I used to practice karate when I was kids. Oh, so sick. Dew is, was my star. Then, okay, so, yeah. nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Jay, how about you? Uh, I won't be biased and say it's the song that I'm on. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, if you I, had to pick another song besides that one. <laughs> I want to say it's the main theme, not on the sidelines. Nice. It, it goes hard. It goes hard. And my boys are on it, so. Let's go. I love it. <laughs> awesome. All right, so we're going to move over to our good friend Colin over here for this one. Um, let's see. Do you want to tell us about a, a special announcement we've all been waiting for? I hear we have a special announcement. Oh, dang. Let me reach to my bag of goodies down here. One sec. Ah, he's <laughs> revealing it from a secret bag that's under the table. The secret announcement, which is very secret. All right, I'm going to stand up for this one. So, Ooh. in uh, collaboration with Milan Records and uh, Sony Music and Capcom, we've got the debut of uh, a beautiful collector's edition vinyl box set here, uh, which I'm going to take apart and show yeah, you guys. Yeah, let's take it we'll apart. Let's take, detail. put some of it on parade. You guys, I got to, because I'm so cool, I got to see this earlier. The what art on the front of this is beautiful. I'm going to take it on a little bit of a parade here for you guys. You can see it a little closer. So sick. So each, uh, each jacket features its own individual character. Thank you. Um, we've got four, four great characters here on each of the, the vinyl jackets. Um, and each, each of these vinyl inside the jacket here Especially decided to be crystal clear, so absolutely see-through for everybody. And there's a reason for that, and that is because the box set also features uh, this very unique 
Zoetrope design, slip mat for everyone's turntable. Uh, and what you can do with this is once you actually get this playing with the record, uh, you can record it with your phone and the, the entire slip mat will turn into a, a pretty cool animation done by uh, our good friend Drew Tad. That's crazy. It is. It's That's very crazy. Super uh, sick. I th we might have a demo up on the screen. I'm not sure, but there's definitely going to be a demo we can link to. I wish I could like, to see. do it for you guys, but I don't think my yeah. arm's fast enough. It's pretty awesome. Um, and then... Uh, that's oh, it's showing. Okay, no, yeah, no, it doesn't stop there. There's more. There's more. Mm -hmm. This is the collect. Oh, it's showing it right now. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. So if you have this playing on your turntable, even with the, the record over top of it, you can uh, record this with your phone and, and share with all your friends. I love it. That's so cool. So you, I know you spoke about it a little bit right now, but I want to ask you, what makes it unique and special for Street Fighter VI fans? Well, we d we've taken the time, and definitely kudos to Koyo here next to me, but we've taken the time, even on the, the cover out of the box set, um, each character has been beautifully crafted into this uh, you know, picturesque photo, uh, hand-drawn. You know, all of them featured pretty equally, um, so no matter who your favorite character is, you'll definitely find inspiration right here on the cover. Um, we did maybe play favorites on the vinyl jackets, but uh, each of the artwork you're going to see both on the cover, on each of the jackets, and then uh, the last bit here too, we've got a really beautiful art book we put together. Um, just, I mean, the details in this are, I can try and open it here with one hand, but uh, you know, inside we've got exclusive artwork, also hand drawn, created just for the sets of, uh, of each of the characters. So again, you can find your favorite character in the art book. Um, and, and see one-of-a-kind artwork done by the team at Capcom uh, with, you know, with some forward notes by the, the game team in there as well that you can read. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, to kind of kick it all off or close it all off, uh, we've got this really cool, also exclusive sticker pack. Uh, you can put decal your card, decal your water bottle, laptop, whatever you want. Uh, this feature is also the same, uh, the same artwork you'll find in the box set. So, I mean, if you're a Street Fighter fan, uh, old or new, yeah, th there's definitely something in here for, uh, for everybody to enjoy. What? That's crazy! Let's hear for this, you guys. All right, so I'm gonna jump to Koyo. Koyo, what was the inspiration behind the design of this collector's item, and how does it tie into the overall theme of Street Fighter VI? The entire team of Street Fighter VI is huge music nerd. They love music, they listen to music. I mean, when they come to LA, they go to Amoeba Records and spend a lot of time there. So huge fan, right? And vinyls was their dream. The box set was their dream. So when we had an opportunity to collaborate with Sony Music and Milan Records, they got so excited about it. And uh, as far as I know, I think you know this is this could be the first time for a video game company to actually design graphics specifically for the box set, like vinyls, because they loved it. So. The design, I mean, color theme, and they, they really loved it and wanted to make something very special for the analog vinyl experience. So they really worked on it really, really hard. The entire team was. And, um, you know, it's it's so special for us in many ways, too. And But also, I think that, you know, personally, this is just my personal experience, but I've been a huge fan of Street Fighter. And honestly, the people in the Street Fighter 6 team, they grew up with playing Street Fighter and they wanted to play the game, they wanted to make a great experience and I grew up with it. So when we decided to work on this, we wanted to create something that we will treasure 30 years from now because I will show you something, my personal stuff. This is really cool. This is my 30 years old uh, treasure when I was a kid. So it's an art book from Street Fighter 2, published in 1992. So at the time, I lost a CD, but I had a <laughs> soundtrack CD over there. And uh, this one, I was just going to show you. It's so cool. So you can see like, you know, all the characters. And as a kid, I just loved it. I paid attention to every detail. I was looking at every corner of it. And this was my little treasure, and I just kept it for a long time. And this has traveled from Japan to LA and still in my bookshelf, right? So for making something like special, the physical item, we wanted to create something that, you know, we open the book, 
wow, you know, we look at it, we pay attention to the videos, color, and everything. So the good news about our art book now for Street Fighter VI, it's bigger. So <laughs> I look bigger. I, you know, it's just... When you open it, it's so big. <laughs> so I just have to kind of lean my neck back and just kind of look at it because it's just so big. I just wanted to have the experience so much. And <laughs> Sony Music is the best, made it happen. The paper feels good and the color looks good and smell, smells really good. So <laughs> I just love the whole physical experience of it. Yeah. So like, that's what we wanted to do. Like we didn't want to put out just something you know we want to the, the music is already out right the streaming is already out but we wanted to make something like you know we'll treasure for like this like 30 years so that was the whole concept i think getting a video game soundtrack on a vinyl is also just so unique in general and the fact that you guys not only did that but did it so well and then also found a way to honor uh your kind of upbringing with your book and i think it's funny we talked about it earlier how we kind of have reversed time a little bit to where you got it on a CD and now it's going to vinyl, which is really cool. Yeah. And you know, and I see an audience too. I see Ryu, I see Chun Li. Let's go! <laughs> I, I'm the same way. I'm just a kid, you know, just yeah. happened to be a little older, but you know, just grew up with it. And you know, I think that people who play Street Fighter really enjoy it. There are so many new players that are playing Street Fighter 6 the first time and they enjoy it. So this is something that I think we all can enjoy, so I'm super happy. I love it. I know everybody here loves it, so we have to know. Colin, please tell us, when can fans expect the collector's item to be available for purchase? And where will they be able to find it? Right now, behind you. <gasps> no, I'm just kidding. I'm oh, I was like, oh, <laughs> it's not, you're lying. So yeah, we got a QR code up here. Uh, you can scan this. Uh, that'll take you directly to uh, our good friends at IGN. They have a page up right now where you can uh, pre-save. So you're going to want to enter your email uh, up on that pre-save page. You're going to get a special goodie if you do enter your email on that pre-save page for the IGN store. Uh, and what that does is you'll be notified as soon as the pre-order does go live, which is going to be January of 2024 for the box set. And then uh, about a month later in, in February, uh, you should have it on your doorstep. Dang. So Let's hear it, you guys. You can get, you can use this QR to get it right now. I love it. I love it. So I want to also, this, this question is going to be for each person. I, we started off on Colin last time, so I'm going to start with Jay this time. Jay, I asked you about your favorite song, which, you know, you weren't biased about. You were very nice about that. <laughs> I want to know, do you have a favorite character from Street Fighter? And who, who may that be? Uh, this, this might not be hard for the team to guess because you've been seeing me do my Chun-Li kicks all day. Hey. Uh, but I'm going to say my girl Chun-Li. Same, sure. same. <laughs> I know nobody asked me, but if somebody asked me, it's Chun-Li. <laughs> what about you, JRP? Your favorite character. Character? Yeah. Like I said, do. Yeah, I love you. You, because you were tied with the music there. Okay, <laughs> sick, sick. Yeah. We love it. We love it. He's loyal to you. <laughs> do you have a favorite character? Yeah, right now at this moment, it's Zangief because outfit three, Zangief. I don't know if you guys seen it. Got like gold watch, you know, just so cool. I just, I, sure. he just looks so <laughs> badass. So I, I, I just love Zangief. He's so. got, he's got that special swag. Yeah. And it's just the way how you can counter with a drive impact and screw. I mean, I just, I just love Zangief too. So I'm just so into Zangief at the moment. I love it. I love yeah. it. Colin. Oh, Colin's got his answer yeah, ready. No, for me, for me, yeah, I got to go over you. Yeah. He's the OG. He's the best. He's also a fun character playing Smash Bros. Uh, as well as Street Fighter. Facts, so. facts. <laughs> you know, he's just a legend, so he's my I favorite. have a, my, one of my good friends has this really awesome Ryu tattoo on his forearm right here. I wish he was here so I could show it to you, but I just thought you'd want to know that. Um, all right, so obviously this whole process has been very important to you guys, and you're working with a legacy IP here. Throughout the whole process, Colin, I want to start with you. Did, was there a moment that you had or kind of an experience that you had that you were like, wow, this is... This is kind of cool. This is like a, your favorite moment of the whole process. 
Um, yeah, heavy question. Sorry, I just want to like throw that on you there. <laughs> I mean, I, I have to give a shout out. He's he's not here. Uh, he's based in uh, Rhode Island of all places. But uh, there's a guy named Stephen at uh, Meridian Printing who, when you see all this artwork from the art book to the box and everything, he's the guy that actually put this together and helped with us. And every step of the way, when he would show us what the next thing looked like, um, I mean, it, it, every time was just kind of just a mind blowing uh, visual. As well as when, when when Drew, you know, sent us the, the videos of what this thing would look like in action. I think it's that, so that, cool. Actually, that probably had to be the best part right there because that's that's just a really unique experience right there. I love it. Koyo, how about you? Well, the whole experience, I mean, you know, this is like really a big work, you know, to design something for your favorite, you know, project, right? So it was really, I think everybody felt the same way, you know, designers in Capcom too, back in Osaka, this is just something that they want to keep it for a long time. So, in many ways, that was that. But um, but there's one thing that I want to share with you, actually. Please, today. yeah. Yeah. So, J Star, that J Star, we really love working with her. She's absolutely incredible. And um, also, we love uh, Rocco Eight and Ronnie Marks. Um, back of the room, they're there. They're really fantastic. Um, the whole Street Fighter VI team, um, we really care about finding the right talents. We really do. And we spend a lot of time, you know, we actually go into Instagram, you know, we're going to TikTok, we go to YouTube, we look for great artists, you well, know. You guys really searched. Yeah, we, we do. Um, you know, like she said earlier, um, we probably went through at least 300, 400 artists to get to Jay. 300 to 400, wow, Jay. Brush, brush the shoulders I, off I, real quick. I feel special, I'm I blessed. feel special I'm for blessed. you. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we really do, and it doesn't, for us, what really matters is to find the right voice and right, you know, um, delivery, the music, and somebody who is going to be right. And we don't care about who is major artist and you know who is independent artist but it's just really about okay this person has something very special so um and uh, that's what we do like we really globally go after many different artists and try to find the right talents for each song so um you know it's just the way how we work together and um you know i just want you to know the whole team is <laughs> really listening to a lot of music and uh, you know they're hoping to have a chance to work with you know new artists too. So hopefully, you know if you're an artist, then hopefully we'll get a chance to work together. That's so cool. And clearly, you guys made the right choice. Shout out to Jay. Shout out to Roko. Love you guys. GRP, did you have a moment through this experience that really was like, wow, your favorite moment um, that hit you, that hit home for you? I still I couldn't believe that. So I, I, I made a team song with the great team. So it was so hard to make the song, but the artists Rocco Eightway, Randy Marks, also Jay, they they give me a great ideas and it, so that so helped. So I was so excited. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Jay, I feel like to ask you this question on this topic is self explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you mentioned earlier a little bit about how everything was very secretive about as it should be, as it should be. So can you elaborate for us on the moment that you found out that it was for Street Fighter? What was that like? Because that's kind of a really big, I don't know if people here like understand fully, especially because there's like, you know, all these crazy lights and a bunch of stuff going on. That's a huge deal. <laughs> it, it definitely is. Um, I was at home. Yes, paint the picture for us, please. <laughs> okay, so you were at home. Let me paint the picture. I was at home in my pajamas uh, with my bonnet on, just chilling. Good, good. And uh, when I got the email from Koyo saying what it was actually for, I uh, ran to my wife and I was like, uh, babe, it's for Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick, real quick. Uh, oh, my God. I called my dad because my dad's a huge gamer. Like, he has... The all the game systems down to like Atari Jaguar. So he like, he collects and he got me into collecting and building my repertoire of game systems hey. and video games. And he's like, disc only, not digital. <laughs> Did you say Atari Jaguar? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, he's, he's old school. But I, I called him and he was like, 
what the heck? <laughs> you know, we were all very excited uh, for it, but my, my favorite moment ever was just the first time I was in the studio with GRP, Koyo, Rocco 808, and Randy Marks. Uh, it was my first time meeting them as well. And it Ooh, felt that's like interesting. I knew these guys forever. Like the vibes were on 10. Like really? Probably my favorite session. Cause it's, I feel like that could swing a bunch of different ways. It's nor, yeah. it, it can be, it can be like that, which is perfect case scenario. But a lot of times yeah. it's not. Where it's like you're obviously meeting these people for the first time. You're you're in a vulnerable situation, but you want to do well as well. Exactly. I love that for you. Yeah, it was it was a lot of pressure, but they all made me feel very comfortable. And when I was on the mic, everyone hyped me up, so that hey. made me feel even better. And it only but, took a few takes, I heard. So you, <laughs> you did know, a good job. You know, couple take J. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, this is a question that we like to ask here at the Impact 24 PR team to our panels. We're going a little off script here. Um, is there any, and maybe we'll start, what time did we start on? We're going to start with Jay this time. Um, is there any, I guess, so this would pertain to your writing uh, or uh, singing on the track. Are there any Easter eggs that you slipped in or maybe uh, inspiration for the track that you kind of pulled from lyrically? Uh, yeah, absolutely. When they said that the song would be used for the pro tour, um, in my verse, I said, I'm focused. You know how bad I want this. Do you want to know what? I listened to the track and I was like, oh, I see you, I see you. <laughs> exactly. I'm giving it my all, never fall. This moment is golden. I control it because they're playing the game in a competition. So they control that moment and they can give it their all and get the gold. So. Dang, that's crazy. GRP, did you have did you have an influence that you pulled from to create the track? Uh, I usually I uh, do uh, the from the scratch start. The sure, artist. sure, and. Yeah, it's a hard question. But no, that is a hard question. You're also allowed to be like, uh, I inspired myself because I'm that good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, usually I inspire by artists. Oh, yeah, okay, sure. I, I, when I make a song, I make a song with the artist, I always imagine the artist on the stage. Ooh. And I got inspired from them, and then I ask, ask the some uh, kids, uh, play some keys, and then I do like it, do like it. Sure. And then, yeah. Dang. How nice that like you ha you tailor the track to the artist because again not always the case <laughs> and as an artist myself I'm like wow that's a very nice special touch. <laughs> well, yeah. GRP that's is true. really unique because the way how he works he's just such a intuitive you know sort of like you know very real time guy like I've worked with many um, record producers but he's somebody who. We just kind of get together and start making beats and producing beats and working with the artist on the spot. So everything happens in the same day and we start from finish, you know, probably a couple hours, everything is done. In a couple of hours? Yeah. <laughs> GRP? I was so focused on yeah, yeah, <laughs> We need to get this man a raise over here. What's going on? <laughs> well, th but that's, that's how he kind of does. But also I love the way how he collaborates with the artists. I mean, of course, the artists like Jay, Rocco, and Randy, too. But he always just kind of, he's such, he's such a really kind of nice, gentle guy, but he's just super easy going. But then he starts giving some really cool cadence and melodies Thank and you. then exchanging ideas. And, you know, a couple hours, everything is done. It's just the way how I think music and art should organically, and not should, but, you know, it can organically can create. So. I really love it. Working. All right, so GRP, I'm gonna I'm gonna write a letter to somebody to get you a raise because okay. that's incredible. Okay, um, Koyo, did you did you have any? I mean, you could pull from your childhood, I'm sure, a lot. Is there any kind of like inspiration or Easter egg that you've hidden in your side of the work that you can talk about? Yeah. So I guess my inspiration is for Street Fighter. It's just a personal attachment to each character. Um, you know, since kid, I've been playing it, you know, through Wars 2, Battle Strike, and, you know, Turbo, I mean, everything, really. Uh, movies, you know, just all that good stuff. But so I have sort of personal relationship with each character, so some ideas with it. But as I mentioned earlier, when new information came out to us, 
uh, to the music team, um, and we just have a chance to start profiling, and it just becomes such a. It's like you know we started dating with the character, you know, just really kind of spending a lot of time and. Okay, so for example, new character Manon. So she has a brother, uh, two brothers, and the brothers absolutely love her. So, and the composer, uh, Yoshia Terayama, he was the one who wrote the music for it. And when he received the information and he started thinking, okay, so his brother must give a lot of confidence to Manon. And so she's like a superstar, she's the judo star, but the way how she behaves, so this must be that. And she, he just kind of started profiling and putting together a lot of cool ideas behind it. And then the process is like music inspiration, but the process actually is the, then reflecting the sort of the characters and background and personality into every details that you hear in the sound and music and the instrument and you know, all kind of fun stuff. So it's a lot of communication, you know, like I have relationship, sure. it's just a communication with a character. It's always nice when the people in charge are also fans. That makes my heart really happy. Yeah. I love that. Colin, what about you? Um, there's definitely, uh, well, in the box set, there's definitely some nods to the to the OG fans out there. Uh, there's been a lot of inspiration put into things like the slip mat and the artwork that uh, I think will make a lot of people happy. And, you know, from, from my perspective, uh, as also, as a, I mean, I think we're all gamers on this stage, right? And we're talking to gamers like, you know, <laughs> anybody who's even not a gamer just growing up, uh, you can remember a time where you were in the arcade or playing on your friend's PS1 or whatever it was. I mean, Street Fighter is just renowned and known, and yeah. it's just, it's, it just carries a legacy with it that, you, you know, not many games last 30, 40 years. And, Truly. And, and so, you know, I, again, the opportunity in my career to get to work on a title like Street Fighter VI was just kind of like, you know, Koyo's inspiration. Uh, you think back to your childhood yeah. uh, and just be like, wow, you know, could I have imagined, right? That it's this, crazy. this is where it leads to. I have a really specific memory of how, of like going to, I was like a, a neighborhood Burger King where like they had the Street Fighter set up and my grandpa would take me there and like Burger King is great, cool. But I was like, let's go because I want to play Street Fighter. <laughs> I love it. So we talked with GRPNJ a little bit and learned that the track kind of happened uh, in the span of a few hours, which I think is insane and should not be understated. Um, I want to talk, what was the process, I guess the timeline process on creating this box set? Like from beginning to end, uh, what did that timeline look like? Either of you could answer, I guess. Well, when did we start discussing? Like it's back in... February, March. Oh, I thought it was longer. Uh, Maybe yeah. It, it took. It took. Yeah. Uh, it. It was. Yeah. It close to a year. I want to say uh, uh, a year. That yeah. I was gonna yeah. say. It has to be somewhere around that because just on like the art alone. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I, a ton of time and effort was put into this, uh, both from Capcom side, from our side. I mean, everybody that was involved. It was not a quick process. We put a lot of love and care into it. Uh, which is what you have to do with vinyl. I mean, vinyl itself is not a quick and easy process, and, and to do it right, you really have to put in the love, and that's what we've done. And expensive. And, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> These days, I feel like it could be a little expensive. Yeah, um, the music too, um, you know, in the music world, when we put together, put out the CDs and streaming, it, there's a process called mastering. So. For this, we actually worked with somebody in UK. Uh, there's a mastering studio called Super Audio um, uh, Mastering. And they are so great at the analog mastering and we really cared about it. So this sounds <laughs> really good in the analog. We're so Ooh. happy about that. I love it, I love it. Um, we need to find somebody, a vendor here that has a record player because I'm gonna go find one and, and steal it. You guys, um, Moving forward, is there any kind of projects that you guys are working on that you can talk about? These are very important people, you guys. Sometimes stuff that they work on cannot be talked about. Is there anything that you guys want to discuss that you're very excited about? Jay, would you want to start over here? Anything that you're working on that we you can look forward to? You caught us over here telling secrets. I saw you scheming. <laughs> I saw you scheming. That's why I was like, hey, 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 what's going on? I want to know. Well, uh, GRP and I have been in the studio working on an EP. Uh oh, an EP? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's extended play. It's like a short album for anybody that doesn't know in the audience. Continue. Sorry. Um, 
not too many details we can share right now, but we're about a couple songs in, but uh, we're working on some other songs for like TV as well and, and film. Oh, dang, that's exciting. Pretty exciting. I mean, working with GRP, it's, it's really exciting because like he said, he builds the tracks on the spot. So we talk for about an hour. Every studio session, we're just sh yapping for about an hour. <laughs> and then we finally get into the music making and uh, he starts to play his bass guitar He'll play his, his keyboard and he'll start to build the track. And before we even have drums, I'm already it's writing already the there. song. And I'm like, all right, I'm ready for the verse. And he's like, you ready? I was like, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are crazy. That's nuts. Yeah, it was a, she is so fast. So when I'm making the tracks, and at the same time, she already done the riddick. <laughs> she's like, hey, hey, hurry up, man. I, I, got, yeah. I got stuff to do. She's, she's so incredible. And then, wow. And I, was, I also, I, I got out of inspiration from her. And then, yeah. All right, so we're going to be looking for more music from this side. Good to know, good to know. Is there any secretive things that you guys can let us know that you guys have been working on that are coming up? Uh, I mean, yes, there are definitely secretive things that I cannot talk about. Ah, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> but ah, yes, but of course. I will say... Uh, Don't get us in trouble here. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Is it working? Yeah. Uh, I will say go check out uh, Milan Records uh, on whatever social platform you're on. Uh, M-I-L-A-N, Milan Records. Uh, we always announce stuff there first. Uh, we got some. If you like video game vinyl, if you like anime, if you like it all, that's the that's the home. That's where we put out the best. I feel like this is the crowd for that. I feel like yeah. everyone here <laughs> likes that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Koyo? Same thing. Well, yeah. So I can't talk too much about it, but yes. obviously, you know, Street Fighter has new characters coming up, and some of you know uh, who they are. So we have to make music for them, right? So. It's pretty cool. It's coming out really great. So all right, all can't right. wait to share with you. It's a very vague, broad stroke answer. I love it. I love it. You guys, I cannot wait to get my hands on these vinyls. I need to go. I didn't see the QR code, so I'm going to get it from one of you guys. Um, that's all the time we have today, you guys. I want to give a huge thank you to our panelists, Colin, Koyo, GRP, and J Star, for talking to us about the music of Street Fighter VI and giving us this amazing box set to look forward to. I also want to give a huge thank you and shout out to Impact 24 PR, Capcom USA, Milan Records, Sony Music, and of course, LA Comic Con for putting this panel together. I love you guys, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Hope you're ready for the fight. Brain Supreme.